Good morning, Year 3, and welcome to Tuesday. It's the 26th of January, and this is your daily writing lesson with Mr Parsons. So, without any further ado, let's get started. Remember the purpose of this writing that we're building up over the next last week and this week is to entertain. We are trying to entertain dragon enthusiasts through our narrative storytelling. And we're all doing it through the vehicle of the wonderful story of the Dragon Snatcher. Remember the story? Well, we're still actually st in the build-up section. We had got to the point where George had got onto the dragon's back and he had taken off and was in flight. And I love the writing that you sent in from yesterday. We had some fantastic ideas coming through. Well done for using your imagination and really pushing to write something which is more engaging. Remember yesterday, you were trying to make the, the writers feel thrilled. You'll make the readers, sorry, feel thrilled through your writing, that sense of speed as well. Well, things are gonna turn a little bit spookier and scarier and it's slightly more sinister today in our writing because we're getting to the point of the story where they are approaching the castle, that creepy, evil castle. Now, remember, George has no idea what's inside the castle. All he knows is he's on the dragon's back and things turn a little bit spooky. So we need to show that in our writing today. So we are learning to make the reader feel caution or nervous, a sense of mystery or even a sense of evil. We want to entertain the reader and make our writing worth reading. Writing that doesn't make the reader feel something isn't really worth it. So we need to change the feeling from excited adrenaline to ah, frightened nervousness. And how are we gonna show that? Well, our success criteria today is to write about George and the dragon's approach to the castle. We need to ensure that we communicate through our vocabulary choices that the reader that is now a nervous, mysterious approach with a sense of evil. And we're gonna use our prepositions again within our sentences and keep going with those. So it's a bit of a change from yesterday. Look, we want to make the reader feel nervous. There needs to be a sense of mystery and maybe even the idea that there is something evil lurking within the castle. So I've given you a different word map today. This is our tension, suspense and mystery word map. Now, not every word on this map is gonna be of use to you but quite a few of them are. Let's pick out some favorites. Words which I think you'll particularly find useful. Cautiously, that's a good one. Oh yes, a heart stopping moment. That will be a good one too. Uh, no, not, I don't want to use horror. I'm not gonna use horror. I'm not gonna use silently. We're gonna avoid suddenly. Remember yesterday, I tried to change suddenly to something which is slightly more interesting. Held his breath. Now that's interesting. Maybe who, the dragon holding their breath? George holding his breath? A sense of unease, yes. From the shadows, no. Out of the corner of his eye, possibly. Could have something out of the corner of his eye. Not really panic, nervously, yes. I'm thinking that maybe the dragon's the one that's gonna be nervous because the dragon knows where he's going. George doesn't. So maybe George is gonna pick up on that nervousness through the way the dragon is behaving. Dread, possibly. Dread is where you have a feeling of something bad is about to happen. Cold sweat, yeah, that would be a great one. In alarm, no, I think that's a bit sudden for this. We don't want anything all of a sudden. We're not gonna use that one. Without hesitation, no, that doesn't work. Tremble, yes. Maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe it's the, the dragon that starts trembling, trembling in fear. That's a good idea. Or maybe shuddering. Uh, ice cold draft, yes. That sort of chilliness, oh yeah. It's not just the weather that's cold, it's the anticipation of the evilness within the, within the castle. Unexpectedly, possibly. Trick of the imagination, no. Fright, potentially. Distress, distress means really, really upset. I don't think that's gonna be right for us today. So we've got lots to choose from. So from our list of our words and our word mat, I want us to think, first of all, which of these words do we think would be useful for us to make 
um, this situation seem nervous to begin with. So we're going to have a look and find some nervous type words. Um, let's have a look. I quite liked cautiously. Actually, we could have cautious. You have the word cautious, if I can spell it, or type it correctly. We have cautious, and then I'm going to have cautiously. So I've got a choice there, cautious or cautiously. Um, what else would be nervousness? Well, someone could tremble when they're nervous, couldn't they? So let's have tremble. Yeah, tremble works for me. Um, nervousness and ideas. So we've got nervously. Yeah, you could have that, I suppose. Panic. No, panic isn't nervous. Less than panic. Panic's too strong. Uh, an ice cold draft. Yes, I think that's a nice reflection of nervous. Ice cold draft. Um, what else is nervous? Unease. Yeah, I suppose I will use unease. Uneasy, you, you might feel the, get the idea that if you feel easy, you feel relaxed. So if you feel unease, a sense of unease, you feel that prickly nervousness. So I think that would be okay. Let's have unease, that's all right. We'll, we'll use those. There, so I've got a small selection from my word map. Now you could add other words. If you can think of other words that mean nervous, the question says, what happens in the journey? How do the characters respond? And I want the idea of nervous. Yep, those things could happen. An ice cold draft could go down George's neck. The dragon could tremble. Maybe uh, the dragon is cautious or flies cautiously all of a sudden. Maybe he slows down. Maybe there's a sense of unease. So take some of those ideas and repeat that in the mysterious section. So go back to your word mat. Can you find some words which suggest something's mysterious? Remember, you don't have to just stick to the words on the word mat. And then finally, that sense of evil, that sense of foreboding. Something bad is happening here. I don't like this. This is giving me an uneasy feeling. Come up with at least three or four words in each of those boxes that will help you. The more you put into those boxes today, the more you think about those words today, the easier your writing will be tomorrow. If you'd like that simplified, then you can take your word mat and cut three words out for each of those sections and glue them onto the sheet themselves. And if you'd like an extension, start to think about a simile that might go in each of those three sections. To get you started, things like its wings shuddered like, I'm not going to tell you the ending, you have to dream that up, or the icy mist swirled like. Can you see straight away, this is not like the exciting adventurous flight that he, we were writing about yesterday. This is a very different type of mood. We want to create that mood in this paragraph. So we're going to take the reader from that sudden excitement and joy and unexpected pleasure of being on the dragon's back. And then we're going to twist it suddenly into something which is much more mysterious and uncomfortable feeling. When you finish writing your words into their columns, give it the check. Are they gonna make the, writer, the reader feel nervous or mysterious and get that sense of evil from the castle? Can't wait to see what you put in your boxes today. Keep them nice and safe because you're gonna need them for your writing tomorrow, where you're gonna be turning each of those ideas into sentences to build a paragraph. And then later this week, yes, don't worry, George will eventually arrive at the castle and we're gonna start doing some more writing based around the other dragon that they come across in the castle. So have a great day, enjoy your writing, and I look forward to seeing the results later this afternoon.